Hello YouTube and uh, fellow 3D printer enthusiasts. Um, just a brief update on my Tronx EX3 3D printer. Uh, it's been a few weeks not still out of commission. However, Gearbest has shipped me a replacement board at no cost to myself. I expect to receive that within a week or two and I, I can rewire up the new board and hopefully this time it'll last longer than four days and my printer will be up and running again but until then what I've done is I've come up with some add-ons updates uh, cosmetic wise and feature wise for the printer and designed those and printed them on one of my other printers uh, the first thing I'd like to start off with is this shroud here uh, a few other uh, individuals have noted that have purchased this printer that the shroud is a little low and it cools the hot end itself like the the actual the aluminum block on the bottom and there's not much play there I have mine all the way up and it's still cooling the whole block underneath so what I did here is I designed a completely new shroud I've taken the measurements off this and I've modified them and I added here a place for active cooling. This will support a 25 millimeter uh, fan. It'll it comes out the bottom on an angle here, and it'll cool your hot end. And there's much more adjustment here as well. Um, I just finished cleaning off the the build plate tape off that, so don't mind that. But uh, there's much more adjustment here as well. It's fairly rigid. It's got uh, cooling here, similar to the cooling side. Um, underneath here, there's two plates underneath the this shroud here. So even if I wanted to make a modification to it here, I can't bring it up anymore because it hits my heater block. So what I did underneath here is there's no no overlap here, so I can bring this up as high as I want. I can actually bring this up to about there. So you see my fan is actually cooling up higher. It's no longer cooling my heating block and I have space here now for active cooling to come down on my hot end. So I really like how this design turned out. It's pretty simple. Um, all of these parts uh, you can find on uh, my Thingiverse page. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get these uh, the files for these uh, parts so you can print them yourself. Um, uh, another option to this shroud, if you do not want to remove this shroud, is I designed a uh, an attachment for a 25 millimeter fan here as well. Same same idea. And you have you can use the two threaded slots on the side here that are for the auto bed leveling sensor if you don't have the auto bed leveling sensor and you want to use this this will fit right on the side and there's a little bit of adjustment on it so you can fine tune it to where you want if you're looking just to add a active cooling to this and you don't have a shroud yet and you uh, you're not in the, uh, the mood to design one you can find this one uh, in the same page you can find this one on Thingiverse as well as all these other components uh, but there you have that um, my bracket here, let's move this over, that holds my x-axis pulley in place is split. It's still holding up, but it's split and it's twisting down. So what I did is I designed a replacement for it. And this replacement is a little beefier, and if you notice here, it also has these um, uh, raised portions on it. And what those will do is when you attach this, in place they fit perfectly within the the channel of the 2020 extrusion and there's no play up and down for this so when you put this here on the end and it's a perfect uh, uh, size to replace the original it's not acrylic so you won't have to worry about this nasty split and you won't have to worry about that downward pull from the Titan belt because these pieces will lock it in place uh, and help with the help the your screws hold it in place so that that there as well I figured this is a, an improvement upon this component here so I have this as well now 
Also, too, I designed this little block, but I, I'm going to modify it, I think, because I wanted a, a spare and a replacement for the Z-axis uh, end stop. But I also want to do something for the front here, so if I ever want to switch up my Y-axis ends up so my bed comes to the front when uh, it's in the home position instead of going to the back and I have to reach through to get my perk. I was thinking of having the ability to wire my wire my Y axis end stop out here somewhere. But I might wire that up a little differently somehow. I just put that there still a uh, spare replacement component for your uh, Z end stop mount. Now just for aesthetics as well as um, safety I find the edges of this extrusion very sharp so what I did is I came up with these little designs here and I have three types I have a center type a left and a right type so and then I have one with no sides on it at all so these little these little components are just the right size that they snap fit into place here and uh, I'll get a good close-up of that but as you can see here they fit the channel as well as they go over uh, uh, the extrusion itself they cover so they they make the edges look a little better and they hide the sharpness so let's take a look at one of these as I'll put one in place at the top here so if we take a look here this is pretty sharp and I don't I never I didn't like the look of that it's unfinished look so when I design these I design them if you listen very carefully snap fit in place and they're black and they match the printer I just it gives it a finished look again and uh, you'll need to print uh, doubles of every one for either side and then for the the front and back base is what I have this one for with the edge there and the edge there so those will just go on in focus here right right there like that and you get a nice little satisfying snap to know that they're snugly in place it just gives it a much cleaner look and I have a I printed off a whole set for all the uh, to cap all the ends of all the 2020 now the only areas you can't cap are your um, two pieces that have your belt but again they just make give it a nice a nicer look and I don't have that sharp edge anymore. They, they hold pretty good. Uh, and if you find you have to, you need them a little snugger, you can probably reduce the size just a little bit. So, then I have this one other component. You'll see this right here. It's offset as well as it's got um, the uh, raised edges in the back to fit inside the extrusion. These holes are recessed so we can get our screws in there nice and deep and here we can mount our x-axis end stop now let me show you how the idea behind this and how I'm gonna mount this so in my original build video what I did is I put some spacers in there because what was happening here see I, ha I have that hitting nice on here but without those spacers I was just barely catching this thing and because of the ball there I would slip sometimes and go past it so it would give me false readings so I added those spacers so I'm hitting a nice solid surface but I don't like that look so what I did is since this printer's down and I thought it was a perfect time that I could make some upgrades for it so what I did is I designed this guy and it sits out so no need for spacers and I actually if you see here I'm kinda low there so if I want to install something where these two screw holes are I might be in the way so what I did is I designed this little bracket to sit inside there 
and sit up there. Now you see here, let me get a close look here. When I mount that in, you see how my ball is just going to be just below the base of the top. It'll be just off this edge right about there. So when I mount that, my ball will just catch where I want it, right up there. And I'll have lots of clearance to mount something here. I'm not interfering with any of these components. Um, I've got lots of space back here. Right over that, see that? So, let's take a good look there. So, that's what the purpose of this is for. It's to give me better uh, mounting placement for my uh, x-axis end stop. And it'll come right down there and it'll trigger right there. Yeah. Just to give you an idea how it'll mount. So, again, all of these components can be found on the same page on Thingiverse. Refer to the, the link in the description. Um, uh, give me a thumbs up if you, uh, if you like, if you think you can use these components. This one turned out to be my favorite as it, it's a perfect uh, replica of this guy, only I have much more. If you see this slot here, I have much more adjustment. I can go up much higher. I can go up right to the screws, the, the chrome screws above. Gives me much more clearance. I'm no longer, if you can see behind this fan, that yellow, it's because I put some uh, insulating uh, cotton, the, the, the cotton you can get for your bed and whatnot, around my heater block because that fan blows right on the heater block. And I have this adjusted up as high as I can go. And I'm getting cooling off that heater block which you shouldn't be doing and it's making it very difficult for thing, this thing to stay up to temperature so I had to wrap that in cotton but once I uh, get this guy mounted in place I can mount that right up there and if you can see the difference I will no longer be blowing on my heater block and then I'll have lots of clearance for my active cooling to come right down on the tip of my hot end and you have lots of adjustment here. I gave it uh, three quarters of an inch adjustment instead of this original uh, little less than half inch, I think. Take a look there. So you get way more Dutch adjustment. You can go all the way down to where that one is. You can go all the way up here. Set that over that screw, it gives you an idea. There, they're about the same. You can go all the way up. So yeah, there you have it. That's my update. Not not very impressive printer-wise, but uh, we do have all these little uh, add-ons or improvements, cosmetic-wise or functionality-wise. And uh, thank you for watching.